Hello again, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be talking about flats and mags. Give you a little bit of a better understanding about them. All right. Okay, so flats and mags, a necessary tool for any tattooer. When you know how to use them, uh, they can be great. They help speed up the process of tattooing just based on their, their general size because they come in very large groupings and they do different things as opposed to liners, right? Uh, more often than not, we're going to use mags for shading purposes. A lot of people use them just for straight colors and fills, which is cool as well. But I mean, initially they were designed for that, right? Um, flats, on the other hand, were just a uh, flat needle, <laughs> a bunch of things put together and they're used for a lot of really interesting things. Um, technique wise in tattooing as well but I mean before we get into actually like how to apply them we should probably figure out the theory as to like how they work so when we get into flats and mags what we're gonna be doing is looking at configurations like if you're to look at them head-on right we're gonna be looking at configurations usually like this a flat is gonna consist of a bunch of needles are kind of strung together very close together and it's going to result in just a flat plane of, of needles, right? Every once in a while you can get stacks where will take two flats and they stack them on top of each other as well. Um, and then mags, more often than not, are just going to be like larger needles, usually based on size. Different tapers would be used with them versus the flats. Um, and they're going to be woven, as per such, and, uh, or unwoven, right? Where we'll just end up getting rid of these top lines. We'll end up putting them inside of each other like this. It basically just makes the flat. Um, so, when we're using these needles, they act with the body a bit differently than um, what we would see when we use a round needle, right, a shader or a liner. Um, if we take our skin, and we'll do our skin diagram like we always do here, and we're running a liner needle, what we're doing is we're, you know, going past that epidermis and trying to plant that pigment into the dermis, and this skin has um, it has to conform to the stresses that are being put on it with this needle entering it, right? Um, and they have to actually give way. So this needle has to break through the skin to get down to where we actually want to put the pigment. Um, this is going to be met with some resistance, right? Because the skin naturally is elastic. It's going to bounce back. And this is why we do things like stretching or prepping the skin effectively before the tattoo, right? Um, so what we see when we're using rounds is you have this concentrated spot where we have, we'll just do a four round, which is square, right? When it comes in contact with the skin stretched effectively, the feedback of that skin, where that elastic, so think of like a trampoline, right? Where it's gonna bounce back after being hit is gonna be mitigated by how much we stretch it. And the amount of force that is actually gonna be required to enter through the skin is gonna be minimized, right? Because the actual surface area of the needles that are being used are gonna be less than, you know, whatever value of, I guess we'll go like needles, um, that are gonna be coming in contact with the skin, right? So the larger the grouping of needles is, the more surface area it's gonna hit, uh, encounter, uh, and that's also gonna increase that elastic bounce back, right? You think about like, if you jump on a small trampoline, how high you can go versus an Olympic size one, right? The amount of elasticity that's there is gonna give you a lot of feedback for what the needles are gonna be doing when they come in contact with the skin. So, if we change that from a round to a flat or a mag, we have to keep that in mind when we're doing our, our tattoos, right? We have our skin model again, and we have a flat that's gonna be coming in contact with it, right? Yeah, I know, I need to buy new markers. I actually have markers right there, I just need to get them out. When we do this, what we're doing is we're increasing that total surface area, right? So the amount of skin that's actually going to be met with the needles is going to increase. And in doing that, it's going to make that trampoline, right, the skin, bigger. So that means we can do one of two things, right? When we can increase our stretch to make sure that that needle is going to be accepted appropriately into the skin, uh, which is, you know, as normal. Like when we do mag work or flat work, you're usually going to have to stretch the skin a little bit more, have a really good three or four point stretch on top of it to make it enter in there. And then we're also going to have to change the angle at which it's coming in to actually enter the skin. Um, this is because, like... With this, because there's gonna be that increased space, I mean, that movement of the skin is gonna be so great. So when this is coming down, we'll say that your throw is gonna be, I don't know, 1.5 or 2 mil, right? Um, the needle's gonna to have to be able to, in that distance of that throw, 
be able to break through the epidermis to plant the pigment down here. Now, if that skin is bending so much that it's just going to accept it, what's going to happen? You're going to get superficial implantation, right? So, yeah, back to it. If we do this, what we're trying to do is make the skin as accepting as possible by doing a few things, right? One is going to be increasing that stretch. If we do that, we're going to be removing this ability of the skin to trampoline out by increasing tension, right? Which is going to make it easier for the needle to pass through that space that it needs to to get into the skin to deposit the pigment. Um, the other thing we can do is change the angle or direction, right? Especially with mags. When we're coming in with liners, man, this thing is sticking. It's like, I don't know, what is it? It's minus two out here right now, Celsius. It's like 30 degrees, 28 degrees, something like that. My fingers are a little cold, so I apologize. Um, yeah, so when, when we're running a, a liner needle on average, what we're doing is, uh, excuse me, we're gonna be coming at it between that, that 60 and 90 degree mark, right? To make sure that the needle is gonna be going straight into the skin with the least amount of resistance and we're not trying to chew up a ton of the extra layers of skin, right? What we're doing is we're influencing that scarring that's gonna occur very effectively by just putting the needle at the right angle. Um, when we use mags, more often than not, we're gonna be chasing the needle as we're moving. We're not trying to do something that's extremely focused and just put into like, a straight line. Right? We don't want a lot of migration. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change that angle. Oh, this pen works way better, right? We'll go angle B. Let's do this, might as well. So we can all see what's going on, angle A. Um, to fit um, that, that needle going in. So it's gonna to have to actually travel further. So on average, if we're using a machine that has a flatter mag, we wanna have a longer throw on it. And uh, by having a good stretch where the skin is being stretched effectively, yes, the needle is gonna to have to travel further in relation to you know, the angle that's going through the skin, um, but it's gonna be met with less resistance. And why is that? Well, if we come straight down on a trampoline, right? We're gonna get all that force that's gonna be pushing it back up. But if we go running and hit the trampoline at an angle, what we're doing is we're transferring that force, right? across that area, which is gonna decrease the ability of that to actually accept it uh, going down and transfer it into the skin. So we adjust our needle angle, right? So instead of running it at a 90 and it's just bouncing off the skin, the more that we drop it, the better uh, able the needle is gonna to be to actually penetrate the skin. And this is directly correlative with what, man, I said that bad, whatever, with the size of grouping, right? So the size uh, should be corresponding, right? With the angle that you're doing. The larger the angle, usually the steeper you're gonna to have to get. But there's always gonna be a point, right? Where we're gonna say, if this is gonna be somewhere between we'll go 60 and 45 degrees on both sides. If you go less than 45, 45 degrees, um, the needle is gonna be, I mean, <laughs> one is probably gonna to have to have such a long throw, it's not gonna make any sense putting it into the skin. But by then what you're doing is you're gonna be damaging so much of the epidermis and even the dermis to be able to get this in here. Your machine's gonna to have to run at a crazy high speed and it's just gonna end up creating more than, unless you really know what you're doing, a lot of scar tissue, right? So we wanna make sure that when we're doing this, we're gonna be using our flat scar mags very specifically to try and decrease that vibration, oscillation, you know, that elastic effect that we're gonna see with the skin. So that's, that's I guess, lesson one, right? Flats and mags, simple configuration, easy to identify, but how we're using them is gonna to have to be adapted and a bit different than what we normally do when we use a liner. That's it. That. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.